Okay, so based on my 3D Mark Time Spike Stream uh, single GPU record video, I wanted to show like how hard it is to cool down the 28 core Xeon from Intel, so the W3175X. This is pretty much the same setting configuration as in the actual uh, record run. So 5 GHz on the CPU, 1.39 volts on the vCore, 1.9 volts on the input, and 3.2 GHz on the mesh with 1.3 volts. And just custom water cooling loop on the CPU over there. Window is open, yes, but it's, uh, it doesn't matter because this is more or less a test scenario, not like a daily situation. So these CPUs really draw a lot of power when you start to overclock them. So uh, now between 200 and 300 watts at idle. This is the total power consumption uh, of the whole rig without monitor. So just a CPU, graphics card, custom water cooling uh, gear. So uh, that's the idle. And let's see what happens on the load. Huge peaks. So we saw peaks up to like 1200, almost 1500 watts. But the constant load is between like 500 and 700, but it's jumping all over the place. I need to ask about this variation from Elmore. But yeah, huge variation over there. And temperature is not exceeding 80 degrees. So currently 72, that's like the package temperature. But yeah, huge variation. And this was between 1000 and 1100 watts. So now we have a score coming out. The uh, hardest individual core was core number 10. As uh, zero is the first core, so 90 degrees was the hardest core. But, but again, a lot of variation between the individual cores. So 17,450, a very nice score in Time Spike Stream CPU test. So now I want to stress why the software measurement for power consumption is not good at all. I already briefly covered this in the Elmore Labs PMD video, but uh, it's easier to demonstrate it uh, with this particular uh, platform. So let me show you. So let's open up Elidex 1 first and we can try something like Citibench R20 because it should have a lot more constant uh, like uh, load compared to the Time Spy Extreme CPU test. So 4.6 on the CPU, same mesh and I'm gonna drop the vehicle from 1.39 to 1.24 okay and now let's open up Benchmate and uh, let's put uh, let's open up R20. Uh, so uh, okay, so let's start the uh, start the test. Let's look at the power measurement figure over here. 436 watts. I'm uh, 536, sorry. And here 910, 920 watts. So almost a 400 watt difference. Huge difference, if you ask me. So uh, you can pretty much throw the core temp power measurement straight to the uh, trash bin and let's check what the uh, benchmate would, uh, would have given us so look at this 537 as max voltage measured by uh, uh, benchmate as well i think they, they use the same readout so uh, that's not correct at all it's almost just half of the real uh, uh, draw what cpu was taking so that was around 910 920 and now, as many people often say, that only the V-Core affects uh, the overall power consumption and temperatures. That's not correct. When you increase the clock speed, the amount of amps the CPU draws, even with the same voltage, goes up. That affects the total power consumption, which also affects the total uh, maximum temperature. So now let's increase the CPU from 4.6 to 4.7. And uh, let's run this again and see what kind of uh, difference we see in the total power consumption by just increasing the clock speed by 100 extra megahertz. Same vehicle, so uh, no difference at all on the vehicle itself. So let's, let's fire up R20. Power readout over here is uh, 537 again. 930, 940, 950 watts, so like maybe 30 watt increase when going from 4.6 to 4.7 this one over here is 1200 watts 
and that's the score 16,459 the hardest call was 88 okay so now what I want to show is that I want to exceed the 1000 watt barrier with you guys so let's put 4.8 but it will not pass at this vehicle so we need to increase the vehicle from 1.24 to like let's put 1.275 but it's still on the edge so it might still fail so it's not certain it's going to pass so uh, that will that will uh, stay the same so let's look at the Elmore Labs values straight away okay That's 530, 900, 540, 500 to 510. So it crashed, but yeah. So almost like 500 watts per uh, connector. And remember the uh, ATX standard for EPS 8 pin connector is 300 watts. So we are almost doubling the uh, power consumption per connector that's uh, rated on the paper. Okay, run again, a bit higher voltage. One thousand and eighty, one thousand and ninety, thirteen hundred and sixty watts, one thousand eighty, almost eleven hundred watts. We saw eleven hundred peak, eleven hundred again, and we passed with a score of sixteen thousand. 869 yeah hardest call was uh, 96 degrees so what do you think so definitely throw these software measurements to the flash bin we can check so again 537 we saw 1100 watts that's less than half of the real value what we saw under load or well, well it's roughly 50 percent so uh, that's why I think every proper hardware reviewer should have a tool like this at hand. And it's definitely easier to check the power consumption with the Elmore Labs PMD compared to the total like uh, power consumption from the wall, like what we used as well. Because now we can easily separate the uh, CPU itself from the rest of the system. So uh, with CPUs it's easy because the CPUs take all of their power from the 8-pin power connectors. With graphics cards it's a little bit harder because there's also the uh, power consumption from the PCI Express slot and it can be higher than 75 watts. Again, it can be like 150 watts or even higher if the card is heavily overclocked. So uh, we were getting well over 500 watts per connector so uh, that's a lot higher than what the ATX standard suggests on the paper. So 300 watts per uh, connector. That's why there are four 8-pin uh, power ports on this board. So we could use four individual EPS 8-pin power connectors just for the CPU. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, hopefully you like to see this uh, video and uh, uh, what do you think about this result? Cooling a CPU like this or cooling the power consumption that exceeds well over 1000 watts with just water cooling. So this is more or less the situation where you need a custom water cooling setup. You cannot cool these huge CPUs with just an AIO. So if you purchase like X299, the 18 core model, for example, or the AMB Threadripper or the Intel LGA 3647, so the 28 core Xeon. For these platforms, you need custom water cooling loop. It's not a joke, it's a real situation. When you run these at stock, they are pretty efficient. They, draw, they don't draw that much power, but really if you start to overclock them, the power consumption and the heat goes through the roof. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So uh, hopefully you liked this short demo and uh, what do you think about these uh, loads and uh, water cooling CPUs and uh, computers overall. So uh, thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next one.